हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई एम शौरम मिश्रा वेलकम बैक टू योर ओन यूट्यूब चैनल विजन केयर एडवाइजर फ्रेंड्स टूडे टॉपिक इज हाइफीमा सो लेट्स नो वट इज हाइफीमा हाइफीमा इज द एकोमलेशन ऑफ ब्लड इन द इंटीरियर चैम्बर द प्राइमरी सिम्टम्स ऑफ हाइफीमा इंक्लूड पेन एंड ब्लड विजन वेन ए स्मॉल अमाउंट ऑफ ब्लड इज ओनली विजिबल अंडर क्लोज माइक्रोस्कोपिक एग्जामिनेशन it is referred to as microhypema hypema can occurs due to trauma surgery or other medical conditions it can be visible as leering or clotting within the eye which can appear black or red if the hypema is completely black it is called an eight ball or black ball hypema let's know causes of hypema The most common cause of hypema is blunt trauma that can lead to accumulation of red blood cells within the anterior chamber. It can also occur after blunt or lacerating trauma, intraocular surgery or spontaneously in various conditions such as rubous iritis, juvenile xanthogranuloma, iris melanoma, myotic dystrophy, keratouveitis, leukemia, hemophilia and in association with the use of substances that alter platelet or thrombin function let's know risk factors patients with hypema may have a history of recent eye trauma or surgery it's important to ask about any bleeding disorders or a use of blood thinning medications for example sickle cell anemia and a history of medications with anticoagulant properties just like aspirin or nsaids that can increase the risk of hypema let's know the diagnosis so friends perform an ocular examination to rule out the globe rupture and diagnosis is primarily made through slit lamp examination of the anterior chamber in cases of significant hypema it may be visible by just using a pen light examination B scan may be used for posterior segment evaluation while ultrasound biomicroscopy can be used to assess the anterior segment and lens especially if there is suspicion of lens rupture or foreign body presence now come to the part of treatment so friends hospitalization may be necessary for non compliant patients those at high risk for secondary hemorrhage children or when other injury demand attention so elevating the head to 30 degrees using a pillow or adjustable bed while avoiding strenuous activity strenuous activity just like cycling running etc placing a metal or plastic shield over the affected eye for protection administering cyclopentolate 1% eye drop four times daily for pupil dilation If patient is using any NSAIDs that can be discontinued and and using mild analgesics such as acetaminophen for pain relief and start topical steroid eye drops four times daily for example prednisolone acetate 1% that can be help to prevent excessive inflammation if intraocular pressure is increased then start managing elevated intraocular pressure with medications such as beta blockers for example timolol 0.5% twice daily and additional alpha agonists for example brimonidine 0.15% three times a day or carbonic anhydrase inhibitors for example dorzolamide 2% prostaglandin analogs and myotics are avoided due to their potential to exacerbate inflammation if intraocular pressure remains high then acetazolamide 500 mg orally can be given twice a day or mannitol 1 to 2 g per kg intravenously over 45 minutes may be added in some cases surgical evacuation of the blood from the eye may be necessary I hope this small video would be helpful for you. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more informative videos.